uh, several years ago, I wrote two books about uh, President Bush and uh, the involvement of him and his administration in starting the war in Iraq, uh, in part based on false statements and deceptions to the American people and to Congress. First of these books is The Impeachment of George W. Bush, and the second one is called Eating Justice how Bush and Cheney attacked the rule of law and plotted to avoid prosecution and what we can do about it. My co-author was Cynthia Cooper uh, for both books. The reason I wrote these books was because I was uh, in the House of Representatives during the impeachment proceedings against Richard Nixon. And one of the most important things that the Congress has ever done, and one of the things that's withstood the test of time and the test of history, because Congress looked in a very fair way, the House Judiciary Committee, in a very fair and thorough way, the misdeeds of the President of the United States, then Richard Nixon, and voted on a bipartisan basis to hold him accountable and to vote for his impeachment. That is um, a very, very important watermark in the history of this country, in the history of the rule of law, and the history of presidential accountability. Uh, after that, Richard Nixon resigned. Uh, unfortunately, a pardon was granted. But the fact of the matter is nobody could ever say that he didn't commit these misdeeds because the record was full and the record was bipartisan and the record was complete. Uh, I wrote this book basically outlining the arguments as to why this should be an inquiry, why this should be an effort to hold George W. Bush accountable. Remember, the Iraq war involved the, the um, commencement of a war against a country that had taken no military action against us. We we're not being threatened and we were not being attacked. Uh, so t taking war making action against a country like that would be in violation of our treaties and UN obligations and so forth. Beyond that, going to war involves loss of American lives and thousands of Americans died in the war. Tens of thousands of Americans were injured in that war. And a, a trillion dollars of US money was spent on that war. A trillion dollars that could have gone to rebuild our infrastructure, our, deal with our education, improve our educational system, build health care, rebuild our country. Instead, was wasted on that war. Beyond that, of course, the devastation and destruction of the of Iraq itself and the injury and harm to the Iraqi people was immeasurable. You can't undertake this kind of an action without having a full understanding of why it happened and how it happened. We know, and I knew at the time in this, the, the book on the, the impeachment of President Bush outlines uh, the deceptions that took place. And we know that uh, there were deceptions about uh, claims that Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda were in cahoots. And many Americans thought that Saddam Hussein, a majority of Americans, by the time Bush and his uh, administration got finished with the lies, a majority of Americans believed that Saddam Hussein was responsible for the attacks of 9-11. American soldiers who volunteered for the military uh, when they got to Iraq were saying, this is payback for 9-11. So the tra one of the tragedies of the war is that America was deceived into believing that we were responding to the attacks of 9-11. <laughs> Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with attacks of 9-11, as we now know. Um, so I was very, very concerned that we do what we've done with regard to President Nixon and misdeeds of, of great magnitude that harmed this country and its democratic process. And I called for an impeachment inquiry into President Bush's conduct. Can you imagine so many years after the commencement of the war in Iraq, which the overwhelming number of American people believe was a mistake, we have never had a full inquiry into how the President of the United States took us in this war, and we know he did so on a basis of deception. But why did he take us into this war? And what were the reasons for it? And what was 
what was the decision making process? A lot of that is has never been disclosed, never been analyzed. And I think that the failure to do this does huge damage to our democracy. If we don't hold our president accountable, if we don't try to understand how a tragedy of this magnitude could happen, we're just putting the seeds for to have it happen all over again. How many Iraq wars can we go through? How many can this country afford? Other countries have managed to do inquiries into their uh, war making um, decisions uh, with regard to Iraq. The British had this Chilcot inquiry, it was a very long uh, inquiry, and the Dutch government also had an inquiry. In both cases, they found that their governments, the Dutch government and the British government, lied to the parliament and lied to the population. Uh, and that's exactly what happened in the United States. If we allow presidents to deceive us into wars, we'll deplete our resources, will become over militarized, it, it'll, it'll hollow our nation out. We need to be focused on, on, on building our country in a way to peaceably um, uh, other countries and other peoples around the world. We certainly have an obligation to find out why and how a president of the United States could lead the country into war, lie to the American people, lie to the Congress, actually engage in crimes and do that and then get away with it. Uh, that just, if, if we allow this to, to go on, we've sent a message of impunity that presidents can do whatever they want and then God help us as a nation and God help us as a democracy.